Be a demonstration on filling your cracks in your vessel that you turned, either bowl or, or hollow form. And we're going to talk about why you would want to use fill. Um, there's basically, we're going to talk about why you want to use them, how to make your fill, prepping your vessel for insert, inserting the fill. Filling it, there's three methods of filling it, and then inserting the fill, and then cleaning it off, and then finishing. So our first step in this is why would you want to fill a crack or, or um, void in a vessel with a fill material? And there's basically two reasons. One would be a structural problem with the vessel and you feel the need to add CA glue or, or some method of, of um, keeping it together. And the second is just decorative. So uh, I've got an exa some exa examples. This, this is a piece that I recently turned. This is cedar. And when I started the turning process, there were some major cracks in it. There was a crack here that came across here, but it didn't go all the way down. As I started hollowing the vessel, more and more cracks uh, occurred in the vessel. And as you can, I don't know if you can see, but these, these, these secondary cracks started appearing and I was concerned that the vessel would just blow apart uh, while before I could finish hollowing it so I stopped hollowing put on a uh, sealer and then uh, filled these cracks with CA glue and it stayed together now did it stay together because I put in the CA glue or would it have stayed together anyway? We don't know. I'm thinking that uh, the CA glue helped because it was really getting dangerous in, in my opinion and, and I don't turn at a high speed but um, can you see those secondary cracks in there? There's another vessel that I turned that um, had a major uh, bark inclusion in the wood and I was concerned that in the after I turned it in the drying process because it was it was green wood it would just blow break apart and so I put CA glue and, and bark in the crack and uh, it still split but it stayed together and so using CA glue bark to, uh, from a structural perspective, is one reason that you would want to use this technique. The second area is just decorative. Again, this is a um, vessel that I turned, and as you can see, it, it had a little one little crack in it here, and I filled it with uh, turquoise. This, I haven't finished this vessel yet, but um, if, you, if you're interested in selling your work or just impressing people with um, what you've turned, I find that a touch of CA glue with, with turquoise is very uh, interesting to the common person. Uh, if you can picture this piece in a gallery people are looking at the three or four pieces that you have in the gallery and someone sees this little piece of turquoise and says and they're intrigued by it they're intrigued by what it is number one they don't really realize what why this piece of brown wood has blue in it so their first question is what is that and then you explain or someone explains that that's uh, turquoise in, in, uh, that the artist has put into the wood 
And then their mind immediately goes to, that's a semi-precious stone. That really makes this valuable. Well, the truth is that's about 50 cents worth of turquoise powder. But um, if given between two pieces, my experience, uh, this piece and this piece without that, this is the piece that, that, that someone would buy. Uh, and so if you're interested in, in uh, selling your work or um, just impressing the person that you give it to, sometimes a touch of color added to the piece is um, a great marketing tool and, and, it, and, and the receiver finds it very attractive. So, and that takes seconds, literally minutes, maybe to, uh, to do from start to finish. So, if you've never done that, the question you might ask yourself, well, what do I use to um, fill these cracks? I have a multitude of materials that I use. Basically, every time that I turn a piece, I try to save a little bit of dust or shavings from that piece. And I put them in these little containers and, and mark them. This is pecan bark powder. Okay. And so if I'm looking for a dark fill material, I would go with this. Uh, this is a medium brown. This is, this is uh, oak uh, from, from um, what I refer to guana oak, which is, has a mixture of, of light wood and, and, and dark wood. Some, some very light powder. This is palm. I have, um, again, a light powder. This is a combination of maple and oak. And then, of course, we use uh, the turquoise. And this you can buy uh, from uh, Craft Supply. Packard. Packard is, is the one I was looking for. My coronavirus mask. Uh, so, if you, and, and if you, if, uh, this is page 80 in the Packard, and it lists inlay materials, uh, metal dust you can use, and, and uh, stones. craft supply again you've got the um, crushed stone in lace and I had to call craft supply to find out what's the difference between stone and in lace in lace is which I don't use um, in lace is a synthetic stone that is mixed with epoxy I use crushed stone and, and, um, and CA glue. It also is a very interesting um, uh, DVD you can get, which is right here. If we don't have that in our club uh, library, someone could, more, I'm more than happy to share this with someone. Uh, this is Ted Sikowski, who does all metal uh, inlay, and it's, it's very attractive on small pieces, and um, it's, so it's a good DVD uh, for technique, not only of metal, but of any other material that you want to use. So um, that would be one source of material that you can get. Um, 
90% of what I use is either the crushed turquoise stone that you can get from um, a supplier or wood. And if you're going to use, so how do you take your shavings from shavings to powder is grinded up my I grinded up myself with the coffee grinder. Uh, we're gonna do that just real quickly. I've got two uh, this is uh, cedar flakes that we can grind up. And so this would be just the, the shavings from from um, grinder with some shavings. You don't want to put too much in there because it, you don't want to bog down the uh, grinder. take longer than that but uh, for demonstration purposes that's good enough Here. then I run it through the sieve through for um, to uh, filter out the large pieces Now we're just going to pour this in here. And filter out the large pieces or let the, the uh, small shavings go into our container. Okay? So that's using shavings. That's not what I wanted to do. So if we wanted to use bark, this is some uh, cherry bark poured in our grinder. Again, you want to kind of break up the bark as small as you can because you throw in a bunch of big pieces in there it will bog down your your uh, grinder and burn out the motor okay so I just want you to get the idea of um, where you get your source material So as you can see, we're making filler dust that we'll use to fill cracks. Preparing the vessel to install your bark. I've got some examples back here of pieces that, that I would fill. This is a piece of, of uh, hickory that I turned, just a, a thin bowl, and let it move. And as you can see, uh, it, was, it had its own flaws, but then in the moving process, it created some more cracks as well. So in looking at this piece, I would decide 
do I want to just leave it like this? We could fill these small cracks with material or and the material could either be natural bark, which would, would, would turn dark, or it could be uh, turquoise, and, uh, which would kind of give it a little bit of pop. Personally, in, this, in a piece like this, I would, use, I would not use turquoise. I would just use natural fill material. And I'd probably do something dark in, in, in these cracks here and then leave these big holes. Um, filling something like this, you could, you could fill it, uh, but I, I think you're, you're, you're not going to change the character of this bowl by filling those holes. Uh, the character of the bowl is going to be, it's decorative, it's just, it's just a unique shape of, of something that, that um, shows how wood moves, okay? And um, like again, this, this isn't a finished piece, so we'll come back to this piece. This is another little natural edge bowl that really moved oddly because when I turned it, um, I didn't have it centered. If I had it centered, it would have moved more um, uniformly. But again, it's more or less an experiment. And in this case, I filled one of those little voids with um, uh, coquina from the beach. Believe it or not, that's pretty hard material. Uh, very hard to sand. Um, and this particular bowl will probably just not go anywhere. It'll end up in a um, trash pile. But it, it, it shows some, some examples of what you would want to consider when if, if you really wanted to save this bowl. I would fill these two cracks here with uh, something, probably dark material, not turquoise. And I would also fill this edge where you can see the bark is separated from the uh, wood. Would fill that and then sand it to where it was a smooth uh, transition from bark to uh, wood. Okay, here's another um, piece that, when, and this is a piece of elm that I've turned and, in, and, and left bark on the two sides. If I, if to remove that, it would have, would have uh, made the vessel smaller than I wanted it to be. And so by leaving it, uh, it gives it some character. It's pretty well balanced. And um, really not, not much wrong with it other than what I would do, I would fill, you can see these little voids right here. I would fill that with dark material. If I wanted to give it a little bit of pop, I would put a little bit of turquoise in this one crack right here to just to give it just a, like I said, just a, a, a little bit of pop. These little voids here I would fill with dark material, bark or dust, wood dust. Um, on this side, again, I would fill this void. Again, maybe put a little bit of turquoise right there. Probably fill this little crack here where the bark is kind of separated just to give it some stability. And again, down here where these voids are, I would fill that with, with uh, sawdust, dark sawdust. It would still be a rustic, bark-like finish, but it just gives it a little bit of stability. And, and I would put CA glue on all this bark 
again, just to give it stability and make sure that it didn't come off. It turns it dark, but um, no one knows that it's really like this except you and me, okay? So that's how I would treat this particular vessel. This is another vessel from the same tree. This is elm also. Very similar to the other one, except a little bit more rough, right? More voids where we've got a, a, an actual void there where, where the bark fell or broke off. We don't have much of a bark on this side. So on this side, what I would do is I would fill these voids, these little spaces here with bark. And uh, on this side, again, I would just fill in these, these outside edges with bark. I would leave all that as it is. Um, we've got a void here that you could either leave, but I would fill that. Uh, probably add a little bit of fill in here and I would have to carve this lip just to thin it out a little bit. Uh, this void here, we could either use turquoise or um, bark. I'm thinking we're going to put a little bit of turquoise in there just to give you an example of what it can do, or how we can do it. Like I said, we'll put in bark here, and we'll put in turquoise here, okay? So this, this, this is a piece that we're gonna do some work to. In filling voids, there are basically three techniques that I use. One is being what I refer to as pressure, where I would just fill these voids with um, the bark and, and let it sit, then put CA glue on it. The second is where we have a void that goes all the way through. You can't fill it without um, the bark just going in, so I put tape on the back side of it to keep it from, from um, falling through and then putting in your CA glue. And the third is, is, is using cord, and we'll get to that in a second. But before we can, we can do anything to this, we're, um, we've got to prep the wood. CA glue, if it soaks into this light wood, it will discolor it. So we're gonna seal that wood with uh, a, a coat of shellac uh, diluted shellac, which is uh, just shellac that is diluted with uh, denatured alcohol. This is my, and I use um, <clears throat> blonde denatured um, shellac flakes and my own uh, denatured alcohol and that I get here at Woodcraft. I get the, uh, the uh, shellac flakes here. They dissolve in the, into the denatured alcohol and you can make your own uh, diluted shellac. I use a little piece of cotton. You can use paper towels, but I, to me, they, they end up um, kind of breaking apart and making a mess before I get done. So. The process I would use is I turn the vessel, let it dry, completely dry. Then I go back and I'll start sanding. I will sand to 180 grit. I don't sand any further because I'm going to I'm going to clean up my um, uh, fill with 180 grit sandpaper. And so if I, if, there's no sense of me sanding this vessel beyond 180 until I get the, all the cracks filled. So I'm gonna sand it to 180. We're going to uh, cover the area outside the vessel 
with, with our diluted shellac to seal the wood so that the um, CA glue doesn't discolor the wood that, that I want remaining. Right? The wood outside of our uh, crack. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a couple of areas that we're going to fill. We're going to fill some of these little cracks here. And I'd really, I really, it's not critical, but I don't want my, my diluted shellac to get into the area that I'm going to be filling because I want the CA glue to absorb into those areas. If you get some of it in there, on there, it's, it's um, not a big deal, but that's my goal, is to uh, just put the shellac on the area that I uh, want to, don't want the glue to stick to. I find the more dense the wood, or I'll, I'll, I'll reverse that. The softer, the less dense the wood, the more likely it is for the CA glue to um, absorb into. And as you saw that in, of the woods that I turn, this cedar over here is about as soft of wood as I turn. And as you can see, by using this shellac, I was able to fill that crack in that white wood, sap wood, and, and sand it off, and the uh, CA glue didn't stain the wood. So uh, that's an extreme case of trying to not mess up your wood in the filling process. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to do a couple of areas here and um, just to show you how to do it. And there's three methods of filling these cracks. Now, now, we, now we've got to pick what are we going to fill them with. We've got all these different samples and I'll be honest with you. To a large extent, it doesn't matter. They all get darker than they were. This powder, this, this fill material right here, as you can see, it's dark. What was that? So you can see how much darker it became after the CA glue was put on it. But I still <coughs> have all these different samples and um, we're gonna pick a, a, um, a color for right there. And what we're gonna do is We got so a little bit of red here. We got some some blonde there. That's pretty dark. Let's see if we can go a little bit lighter. going to use this oak powder all right um, this isn't real fine and and again I find that if you go if you if you um, 
grind up your fill material to too fine a powder, the CA glue really doesn't absorb, then soak through it. It will um, just more or less sit on top. And we, and we really want it to soak all the way down through the fill material into the wood beneath, beneath it. <clears throat> A lot of people will use uh, two or three steps because the first time you do it, it may not, um, it may still have a void or a crack or a little area that, that uh, didn't absorb the material. Uh, but again, what I'm doing is rough. And so if, if when we fill this, if there's still a little void there, a little crack or some, some part that didn't um, fill in completely, no big deal. It's just like the rest of the wood. So now, this is what I'm using. Starbond, thin, super fast, thin, super thin. And so I buy it in this 16 ounce bottle, transfer two or three ounces into a squeeze container. This little um, flexible nozzle gives you better control over putting it on your vessel as opposed to um, just having a, a big nozzle there. You always want to have a uh, paper towel because when you put it on it's going to run it's going to drip and then you, the faster you wipe it off the better should wear a, um, a mask the fumes from ca are very harmful uh, they can uh, inflame your your sinuses have a well ventilated have a fan blowing um, or, or wear a uh, mask, but for this, we're not gonna do that. So I'm just saturating the, the area that we've filled. Okay, so as you can see how much it discolored that. Uh, it, but it's, it's not going to discolor this over here uh, because we've got the um, shellac, coat of shellac there. We can put a little bit down here. And we've got all kind of colors going on in here. When we're done, anybody that's not a wood turner is not going to know that we have filled these cracks. And you can see how it's discolored the, the bark there. And so that's the, another reason why I'll end up putting uh, CA glue throughout this, this uh, bark area. Okay. Make it a little proud because it, it will compact when it gets wet. But we're gonna, it just makes it less sanding. Um, if you don't make it, if you make it too proud, then you just gotta sand all that down. And uh, it just takes a little bit longer. Anytime you're using CA glue, make sure you've got the debonder. Someone once said, when you're using CA glue, never touch anything you can't pick up and carry. That's, that may be a problem there. Um, and, and that's good advice. I did, bring, I did bring my debonder just in case I got glued to something. Okay, so it's best if you can let the CA glue dry by itself. Um, you're going to, if, if you ex use the accelerator, 
which we'll, we'll probably do, uh, you're subject to drying the top before the bottom dries, and uh, that can be a problem. So I, you try to avoid using the accelerator, just, just give it a little patience, and, and uh, you can uh, overcome the urge to move on. What I'll typically do is do my CA, let it sit, go, you know, clean up the shop, put away my tools, just do something to keep going to, to so that I avoid uh, trying to hurry that glue. Okay, now, so that's one method of installing the glue. Which I call pressure. We just filled it, put CA glue, and um, let it go with that. Now, if we had, okay, we've got a, a void here that goes all the way through. Those cracks didn't go through. Where this void goes all the way through, we're going to use method two to fill that. Use some tape. To dam up the back side of this. Okay. And now we're going to fill that with turquoise. If you buy turquoise, this is craft supply, that's the way it's going to come. And, then, and that's the uh, crushed stone powder. And now I just put it in this container because um, it's easier to get to, or a way of storing it. That little bag of turquoise will probably last me several years. And I should have looked to see how much it cost. We'll, we'll go back and look at that if we have time in a second. But it is not expensive. So we're really putting it in the same as we did with the um, just pressure, but we, we have a, a backing that keeps it from going all the way through. Again, we want it just a little bit proud if possible. to settle into the crack. This this crack is it, this this vessel was turned a thick quarter, maybe a yeah, thick quarter, and um, so that's why it's it's taken as much as it has. Um, but um, uh, 
We're there. Okay. So now, same process. We're just going to end this. This may take two steps. We might have to go back and refill this again, but we just want to saturate our little crack. Make sure that we've got our uh, CA glue has, has gone all the way to the bottom of our void. Okay. And it looks like it, it did okay. Um, so. We're going to set this aside and let that dry. Our third example of how to fill a void is using cord. Where we have a void, like this, that goes all the way through, but we can't access it with tape because my hand's not going to get in there um, or avoid. So we've got one, two, three, and some more, oops, over here, bigger. Okay. That uh, if we, your option is either leave it. But if you want to fill it, you could fill it with turquoise again, uh, or wood, bark, and any, any kind of shavings. Um, how do you do that? So um, we're going we're gonna to fill those voids using cord. I don't know if you can see or not, but there's little uh, whiskers uh, in that void. It would be probably better. It would be easier to do if we got rid of those. Two ways of doing that. Make sure that doesn't fall. Did I say this is hickory? I'm pretty sure. You can use these dental picks. You got this at, at um, Harbor Freight, probably cost $5. Uh, and just kind of reach in there and try to knock them down. So that uh, our, our cord doesn't hang up. And you can see we've got a void here. It's got all kind of little um, shavings, whiskers, something, whatever you want to call that. All that's got to be cleaned out, you know, before I finish it. I would do that in the sanding process. If you have a Dremel, you can use a Dremel to, um, as you can see, that goes all the way through to clean that out. You can use you know any kind of piercing tool. So what I would do here from a artistic perspective, I would fill this crack, not that. Leave that hole there. I would fill this crack. The all these cracks, I would fill. Um, This crack, is really, yeah, I would fill that, okay? I would not fill that. I would probably fill this. And again, I wouldn't use turquoise on this. If I would use the, uh, the bark, 
if I was going to do anything in turquoise, just to, just for a, a small accent, would be a little area like that, just a little. Um, so just just give it a little color, but in this particular case, I probably wouldn't. Or you could do a little color here. And if I did it here, I probably wouldn't do it there. I probably wouldn't do both of them. I wouldn't do this one. I would fill this with, with um, bark, a dark bark, most likely, because you got these dark streaks in the wood. We would fill this. And as you can see on this piece, I sanded this piece yesterday to 180 and uh, went ahead and put a coat of, of uh, shellac on it just for the sake of saving time when, when we got here. I didn't want to have to do all that um, during, during this, the demonstration. Okay, so now we've got this piece ready to um, fill. All right, so I like this cord here. So we're going to, if it'll stay there, we're going to fill this. So we need, and I like this because I have filled cracks with this where I put in that much cord, right? Three, three layers or three uh, strands. The crack was that, that big. I've also filled it where, the, where you can see this will separate. And then this will separate again where I've used as much as or as little as that. And sometimes that's all it takes in a small crack to keep the fill material from falling through. Scissors work great for cutting this, except when you buy the scissors at Harbor Freight, you can get three scissors for about $4, and they're worth exactly what you paid for them. So I use a little knife that I got at Harbor Freight for 99 cent. Every time I go to Harbor Freight, which I, uh, it's not my favorite store, but I go there and buy stuff all the time. 99 cent. Every time I go, I buy a new one. So we're going to um, put this in our hole, all right? And I'm gonna use my little dental pick all right, so it's about that long. Where's my little dental pick? Here it is. You've got to get this below surface. I have, at times, not gotten it deep enough, and when you sand, your material off, you see a little bit of white cord. Uh, then you gotta grind that down and kind of start over. Okay, so. I wish my string was a little bit longer, but that's, that's cut another little piece. So in that section, we've got really two pieces. And we're just gonna get it deep enough to where when we sand and clean it up, it doesn't, we don't see the white cord. I think the material itself will, is, is probably 
uh, thick enough to where we're not going to need a piece of string here. If we did, I would take this, cut it, separate it. A little dental pick, feed it into our crack, and it's not wanting to go into the crack because we didn't clean out that little whisker. Remember when I said we were cleaning out all those whiskers? That's the reason for doing that. It inhibits our string from going in there. Okay. So, I just want to show you that um, you can separate your string and use a smaller and smaller piece to fill the crack. Okay? So, our crack is filled. We can add our material. We decide what we want to use. Let's see what we got here. Ah, that is walnut. It's a little light. Let's see what else we got. Cherry bark. And there's a little bit of red in this. So let's, let's use this and see what happens. This is a pretty fine material. I knew a joke, this would be a good time to tell it, I guess. Not a good time to sneeze. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's right. towel around. I lost my paper towel. Thank you. This would probably take two filling sessions because it's what we really, all we're really doing the first time is setting a dam, in essence, for, um, so that the material doesn't go all the way through. And as you can see, the CA glue is setting up. You see it bubbling and smoking. That's what you don't want to breathe. Add a little bit more. Okay. set that aside, let it set. Come back to this one. Oh. 
We should have taken that tape off before now because if you wait too long, it can um, be hard to get off or, or attach itself to the back of the, of the uh, vessel. Then it's, you got blue tape on the inside of your vessel. But um, so you can see the um, turquoise went all the way through. We've got a nice coating there. What we're going to do is now we're going to clean it up, sand it. If you're, when you're uh, using this filling cracks, if your vessel is perfectly round, you can turn it off with a gouge. Uh, but because very, very seldom are my vessels perfectly round, it hasn't been twice turned, um, I clean them up by sanding. So, let's do that. This is, um, when I turned this, that was my tendon. Uh, most of the time, I will not return the tendon because I'm not going to turn it again. I'm just going to use my chuck to hold this in place while I'm sanding. Um, so, uh, stay there. Let's get a chuck. I think this one will fit. probably used a different chuck on this, but like, like I said, all we're doing is sanding. And so uh, we're not going to be turning anything. It's um, All we're going to do is sand that off. Just turn the speed way down. Yeah. <laughs> was turning a spindle before. <laughs> yeah, we're, well, we're not, I'm not going to turn it on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Typically, I will use a firm pad that... Um, And again, like I said, 180 grit. This is, um, let's see. So, 
as you can see, we did not do, now, there's a little bit more sanding. That, that discoloration right there is from the CA glue. Uh, and we can sand that off. And let's sand this a little bit. That really hurts my ears. I don't know about y'all. I hope that didn't disturb you too much. But um, I always wear hearing protection whenever I'm using these Harbor Freight drills because they're, they're they uh, sand. I mean, they're they're so damn loud. All right. So what we're looking for here is a crisp edge between our turquoise and our wood. And where you don't see a crisp edge here, that means that there's a little bit of CA glue right there. We've got a crisp edge going down here, not right there, and, and this will polish up as we go into our finer grits. So let's, let's see if we can clean that up a little bit. Okay, so you can see we now have a, a lot crisper edge right there. And, um, and for the most part, I would work on it a little bit more, but for the most part, that's, that's how we clean it up. Okay? We didn't do that. Any questions so far? <laughs> no? Okay, we'll keep going. All right, there's their, um, Phil, it's really, it's dry, but it's not, doesn't seem to be perfectly dry. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of accelerator. Hold your breath. crack goes all the way through see that key so that's that's what we would fill, use our, our cord to fill to keep the material from falling through so let's let's sand on this just a little just for the sake of time I'm gonna change to a uh, 120 grit If I had my air compressor, I'd blow it and clean it. for this crisp edge and um, we've pretty much got it from from there down to here is a little bit more sanding needs to go on down here but that's what it's going to look like when we're done now when we're, we, we're gonna I, I would sand this all the way to uh, 600 my typical process and um, 
when, when we got done, it's not going to look like there's no crack there, but it's not going to look like that. And, and on a vessel like this, that's the look, will be the look that I, that I want. It'll still have a hole here. Like I said, I will fill this crack here. Um, I'll fill some of these. Could leave this or fill it either way. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, something I would decide at the time. Same with this one right here. So it's, it's your, it really becomes an artistic expression. How and when you, you um, fill cracks, you don't fill cracks, you fill voids, you don't fill voids. Particularly, like I said, we've got two methods of, or two t reasons for filling, one for stability, one for just art, for the appearance of the piece. And if you're, if you are um, just dealing with, with the artistic appearance of the piece, then it's up to you. You know, you, you can, you can do it, not do it. It's, it's just, it's, it's your expression of what you want the piece to look like. At times, there can be a structural reason for doing it or not doing it, but um, more often than not, it is just what you want the piece to look like. Again, any questions? No questions? All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, and um, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. I think I covered all the pieces. Finishing, finishing. Use whatever method of finishing that, that um, you want or would typically use for your uh, piece. You can spray it. it, it fill, what you've done with the CA glue and, and the turquoise or, or wood chips does not affect how you finish the piece. Whatever finish you're most comfortable with um, is fine. So uh, with that, uh, and there's no more questions, then um, thank everybody for coming tonight. <laughs>